Well, let me let me take this off. And, you know, here we are in Doha, the airport, making our way to Cape Town. I figured I have an eight-hour layover, however long it is. It's like 11 something now. I think it's 11 o'clock now. I have to be on the plane to Cape Town leaves at 2:15 in the morning. 11 to 12. So the morning of the flight. Like, no, I'm on my flight. Well, whatever, you know. <laughs> I have some time, and uh, I haven't changed my SIM card yet, so let me just, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. let me just make a little video here. I haven't been to this airport in a long time, you know. In fact, since the, I think when the whole, no, that was in, well, I haven't been here in a very long time. And the, my, has it changed? My change expanded. Right now, I'm in this, like, you hear little birdies, right? Oh, it's a recording, you know. And this is like, uh, how I say, uh, like gardens area today. Like a little garden thing. Like, oh, I got something to show you. Wow. Yeah, let me show you and then come on back. You know? No, no, let me, let, let me do the gist of it. Then when, when I'll go and show you something else. Because, uh, it's quite interesting, right? Okay, so it's been, whoa, it's been a fantastic trip so far. I know I keep on saying fantastic a lot. But look, so I left New York. It was a little kind of interesting, but I left New York. I know I took the train up from Virginia to Amtrak up from Virginia to the Long Line Railroad to the to the Jamaica station that gets you to the air train. And when I had the air train, what happened with the air train? I uh I was using my I thought I had enough money on my senior pass, you know, my, my Metro Rail pass to hold for Um and see it says senior citizen. So you get a little discount. Anyway, so I, I, I put the thing in, I was, oh, this uh, ticket for, uh, uh, to make a station from the Long Island River. I figured I'd change that too, because, you know, the point, this is like, here, here's what you, here's what you stumble yourself into. Right now, this is my YouTube channel, but this is my regular reason I started my YouTube, a long time ago, well, the reason I use my YouTube is for, it's like a, uh, like an audio memoir. You know, as things go along, I, I make post things and a lot of times about some other things. Oh, go to my, if, if you're really interested, go to my interview section. That's even better. Not me, or at least pontificating. But now I have to go back to my regular, the reason I started YouTube. It's not monetized. It's creative comments. So I don't get any traffic here. You say, well, you ain't got no subscribers. I'm not supposed to have subscribers right now. <laughs> I don't want subscribers, right? Uh, because it's, 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 it's like a library. I'm, I'm a, I'm, at heart, I'm an archivist. You know what I mean? So I'm archiving my own life. A long time ago, I used to tell people, i say, look, now you got to talk to your elders, you know, blah, 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 blah. Nobody listened to me. So then at one particular point, like, I'll tell you what it was, in 2014, I thought, hey, wait a second, I'm an elder. <laughs> so, anyway, so YouTube came along, and that's what I use it for. I don't use it to make no money and nothing like that. I don't want no followers for that. Okay, so I got to throw this stuff away. But this, I don't know how long this will last. Oh, look, look what else is in here. I got the, no, this, this is my, uh, Oh, this came in handy. This is the American plug, right? So on the plane, they had the, the thing where you could put your, um, you know, stick the, stick the USB in, charge the phone, but that wasn't working. I realized I had this, and I looked down, they had a plug, almost like a universal plug. So I plugged it in there, and I charged my phone up on the plane, right? Anyway, that was good. And uh, so let's stay. In the, let's not stay on the plane. Let me get before we get to the plane. So when I got to uh, to make a safe with with me. Catch the uh, the sky train to the airport, right? This I put in the thing, took it, took the car. Said, hey! So I said, I asked the guy, and he came over. He said, Well, what happened? I said, Well, they took my car. I don't know if I had that, but it took my car. And then he went in there, opened it up. The floor, I guess the floor was a senior citizen. He must have had something on him, right? I mean, you know, so felt some way. So I said, No, no, I'll, I'll let you do it tomorrow. And uh, but it cost eight dollars. Cost eight bucks. Usually when I go, I use my Metro card. I, it, it cost me about a, a, a half of like 175 to go all the way from Harlem to, uh, you know, I, I, I catch the train, then I get on the bus to go to the thing. Don't cost me nothing, you know what I mean? But here, I had to pay $8 for the thing. The, the Metro Rail, I mean, the, um, Metro Rail, the uh, Long Island Railroad ticket was uh, 1075 one way. But I figured, let me just spend the money because I wanted to get there on time because I was my, well, I just wanted to get there on time. I had to get to the airport at the wrong time. I wasn't in New York, I was leaving from, from Norfolk, Virginia. Okay, so so he lets me through, you know, and then he says, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, where are you going? So I go, Cape Town. And he's going, to go, oh, you traveled? I said, oh, you had traveled a lot. He said, you got a, you got a YouTube? 
He said, you have a YouTube channel? I said, yeah. So I gave my YouTube address and gave my Instagram. I guess you'll find the Instagram. But I forgot, I messed up because I wanted, I should have took a selfie of him so he could see himself on Instagram, but that didn't happen. I keep on touching my beard because I don't know why. Anyway, but I do know why. See, I have my, see, my beard's been growing out and I've been letting it grow out, right? And, uh, but the thing is, here's what, here's what happened. There's this picture I took a while ago, right? With this picture here. I really like this picture. This Sikalela here, right? That's me, of course. And that's Ian. Now, if, if you really look at it, like, Africa, especially, like, he's, he's Zulu. Those of the Zulus, they don't smile, right? So he's got somewhat of a smirk on his face. I got the regular Anthony, just like that. And Ian's got the whole, you know, well, he's South African, but, you know, has uh, the English kind of thing. But he grew up in South, well, he was born in South Africa. You know, he's he, he been there, right? But he's got the smile, so I like it. But I just like the way we all sort of look like the same age, though we're not, right? Uh, but I, I sort of like this picture a lot. But when I was in Cape Town, uh, you know, I took that picture, I took that picture a while ago, right? Uh, I think later it did come down, I, I saw him. But then um, then I realized when I was visiting that time, uh, I was with a guy named uh, Kalori. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a scholar. He, I just know him for a while. He's, he's Nigerian. Oh, I, let me tell you one time. We was at Tugor's right now, and my wife had made me a his Here's him, my wife. Like, this is my wife. Me and my wife and Alice. Don't look like we could be any place in a in the third world, whatever it is. Anyway, I'm bringing these pictures back because they were with me in, in Virginia, but I'm putting it up in the hotel house here, you know, back where we live. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so and when I was visiting, uh, Gloria was there, I got an interview with him. Go to my, by the way, like I said, go to my interview uh, playlist. And, uh, and uh, it was kind of low, but I got an interview with, with Gloria, uh, uh, you, you see. Uh, and, and uh, we was up at Chimaranga, which I'm wearing a Chimaranga t-shirt right now, you can't see that. It's down. The Chim Chimaranga, I'm starting to wear a pendant, which I used to wear jewelry. See, what does it say? You can read it. Freeze the frame, you can read it. This is a Chimaranga kind of thing. So I got that t-shirt from there. But I was up there at the time when I did the t-shirt. And, uh, and, and Tony decided it's Chimaranga, right? He's got a bushy beard too. You know, it reminds me of Fido Castro. They said, why don't you shave? He said, takes too much out of revolution time. Good quote, right? So I, I just got obsessed with that, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I ain't got nobody on pressure. I don't care what my beard looks like. So I said, when I come back again, I want to have a bushy beard too. Now, I got to get Cologne and, and, and Tony together. I got to take a picture of us together like that, the three of us. Will it happen? I don't know. Because, you know, they might feel some way about it. They might not cooperate because, you know, People don't cooperate with me, so it don't matter. Okay. So that's why. And I'm going to, then, okay, so that was my excuse for keeping, keeping it growing in the States, right? So people ask me, I said, well, you know, I got to take a picture when I get back. Now I got another excuse. Check this one out. I think I want to go to India, right? And when I go to India, I want to have a, be a beard, 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 beard. If I go to India, it ain't going to be until like, I don't know, maybe next year this time or something like that. So. I'm gonna keep on growing, and I ain't gonna groove it enough. I always I, I cut around the thing because I don't like the hair in my mouth. I cut around the thing like that. But, but other than that, you know, I, I let it go. You know, okay. So that's that. So let me go back to the trip. Things are happening. I call it like it's, 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 things are cascading on me, right? Here's the thing. And this uh, right before I left, uh, well, right before I left, December, I took a trip. You know. Because my, my, my base is, is, is Chesapeake, Virginia, right now. Um, that's where my sister lives, that house, blah, blah, blah. I got my little room, da, 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 whatever. All my books are there, everything like that, right? Okay. So I took a trip uh, from Norfolk to uh, St. Louis to, to visit my friend who has all my writings, right? And then I came for a couple of days. I wanted to get some good Then I went to Chicago and took this train trip from Chicago to Seattle, right? All right, you know, Amtrak, you know, three days, whatever it was. It wasn't all that impressive to me, you know. I guess next time I'll, well, anyway, so, so I did that. I did the coach, you know, because I ain't got no money. I will. I've been traveling, I just talked to, to the guy in the, in the washroom, you know, here. Uh, one of the attendants, he said, well, where are you from? Because they always there. So I said, well, that, I explained to him, well, you know, if you want to know where I was made, I was made in the South Bronx in New York City, but I'm from a lot of places. I've been all over the world, and for the last, since 2003, I've been living in Cape Town, 
and well, I've been living in South Africa, and now I live in a rural area of, of South Africa, with the whole spiel, right? Uh, so, so, but here's the thing. Well, I realized something. When I first started to travel, when I really started to travel, when I left, I mean, left my home in 70, in South Bronx in 70, where I was born. However, when I first really left the country, I'm weird enough, like, like I say, 1973, when I was in Air Force, I had a choice between going to, uh, I think it was Egypt, or staying in the States and going to California. And somehow, my, I don't know, not in my brain, but some, sometimes my spirit was saying to me, hey, you know, if you leave, if you go out of the States, you're going to keep on traveling. I mean, I don't know, that's how it articulated. So I just wanted to stay in the States and go to I went to California, or uh, I got adopted in Richmond, by the way. It was kind of, it was very interesting. I was in that trip, and, uh, and I said, well, I heard that my brother's out here someplace, you know, Steph, do something like that. I said, well, I'm going to look for him. They said, how do you look for your brother? This is a big place. I said, look, let's go to the best dance club. Let's go to the best dance club, you know, black dancers, and let's, let's go there. Sure enough, we walked in this club. There was my brother on the floor, dancing on the floor. Unbelievable, you know? My brother, he just passed uh, last year. Nothing from COVID, but whatever, whatever. That's why, I keep, that's why I keep this little patch up here. That's my older brother. I got a little thing on my nose. That's for my younger brother who died in jail, okay? So anyway, so, uh, so, uh, 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 so anyway, so, 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 so I have a connection with my, my, brother, my brother. So now I'm traveling with, that, with all those spirits with me, you know, with all that backup with me, right? Now, here's the thing. When I traveled this time, I went and, uh, what did I do? I went, when I got to Seattle, I took the bus, of course, because I, I had booked this train trip from VIA, VIA Canadian Rail, right? And uh, so I booked this trip, like, uh, uh, way before COVID. And so, but because COVID hit, they can't, they canceled, but they, Canada closed down, so they wouldn't, they would do it like that. So, um, so, so what I did was, I, I took the trip. I finally got to take that trip. That's why I took it, of course, the train to Amtrak across the northern United States, and then got on the, uh, on the, on the Canadian thing. I spent a day in Vancouver. It was very nice. I had a tour, a tour thing. I want to get back to Vancouver. I will. So then I took that trip to Vancouver to Toronto. Like there's some people in Toronto I want to see. Uh, uh, Dr. Mills and stuff. Where are Dr. Mills? Dr. Mills. These people are important. Well, they're important to the planet. They're important. I think they're important. But um, I have a gift from them that I'm going to. Uh, uh, here. Gave me a, 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 one of his unfoldments. Now, what, what happens, Dr. Mills? He does these spontaneous unfoldments. Well, he's passed right now. He's a blessing. His eternal soul. He passed in early, early 2000s, right? And so, so I'm going to read. I, I'm going to read a little bit of this, you know, on the plane or whatever. Have you? Because I do what I do. So, so anyway, so I keep on looking up because this guy is playing soccer right in front of me. He's got all this space over here. He decided to play soccer over here. Right where I started talking. Right? Now they're going so good. See, spirit just moved people out the way. Anyway, that's the point. So I took that train trip. Now, on that train trip, here's where things start to be interesting. On that train trip, uh, my seat, had, uh, you know, I had my seat, right? then there was like a partition, but there was space between that partition, then another section of the seats began. So I had my seat right there, that's where I sat. And so this is a four-day train train trip. I took the, I took the coach because that's not, I, you know, whatever. I didn't take the sleeper or anything like that. Anyway, so, uh, so I had, what's interesting, so I had the two seats because, you know, that's the goal, everybody has like, two seats, so you just stretch out or whatever it is. But also, in the back of my seat, I had a, a, what I call an exercise area. Because it was the area enough for me to, to dance in the morning, do my little stretching and, and dancing. So that was like, oh, this is nice, right? So I had that going on. Then I met, I've, I've reported on this before, it's on my Instagram, so you can see what it was. Okay, that was, a good, that was a good omen, I think, right? Traveling, train travel, got a place to exercise, there you go, okay? So now, when I came back, now when I took this trip on this plane trip, right now, interestingly enough, right? I like I said, I get to the airport time, blah, 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 everything goes smoothly. When I get my seat, my seat assignment was uh, uh, like something like uh, something D, whatever it is. But it's, you know, at least, you know what they do? They have, the, uh, they have seats where they have like, uh, they have the three seats, then they have four seats in the middle, then they have three seats at the other end, right? But my three seats, because of where it was, when they start the section in the middle with the four seats, 
the first two rows only has three seats. They have like a little space there, you know, I don't know what they do. Well, I had that first seat, but that space, right? So, somewhere in the middle of the night, you know, everybody's sleeping, right? Well, I guess halfway, some, somewhere. I got up and I danced. I, I got to dance for like 40 minutes, you know? He, hey, shout out DJ Rowan. Dance with DJ Rowan. Um, so, I had my house gospel in my, in my, in my, in my ear, you know, in my, uh, in my thing. Got the, got the Bluetooth going on, and I'm dancing, you know. So, there's like 100 people sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Get myself, get my act together because I gotta, I gotta keep moving. Man. Let me tell you, because I, I had this. When I did go to Cape Town, for sure, I gotta get to a chiropractor. Uh, because when I was up in Canada, when two months wife, two months before I left there, two months wife, she gave me this. Because uh, she, used to, she worked for a chiropractor, and she, the chiropractor retired. I think she just part of her, but she gave me this, right, this uh, for uh, muscle care, right? And it's also in the side, right? So I'm using this, uh, professional therapy, extra strength, pain relief gel by Dr. Chris Oswald, preservative free. So, so what I do, this is like a roll on, so I roll it on my back, my lower back, down my leg, down my um, hamstrings, I had hamstrings popped over my life. Down my hand free, and it, it works. They, I'm, I'm the, I mean, if you probably come to Canada, they might have it in, in South Africa sooner or later. So I'll check that out. Anyway, so, uh, so, I, so that, I mean, that really works, you know. So okay, so, 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 so I'm just trying to say everything's going swimmingly well so far. So now I'm in Doha, and they, they changed everything around. This is really good, you know. And I have a have this long stay, but this doesn't seem to be too long. No, only be four hours. I don't care. I can stay eight hours. I don't care. I got books to read. I mean, well, books. I got stuff to read. I can listen to stuff on the thing. I eat. I eat. I eat. All the rest of that stuff. Okay. Let me put this this back in this bag here. Um, but here's the thing. When I first started to travel, uh, I mean, seriously, I guess it was 19. My first trip outside of the country was. I have this habit of traveling on my birthday and on, on New Year's. New Year's is on my birthday when I like to travel. So one year on my birthday, and what I used to do on my birthday, I just get up and say, huh, and I jump on a conveyance. Usually be a New York City subway thing, but you know, sometimes I just be on a bus and go someplace like that. But that particular year, 1988, I decided that I was just going to get on the train. So I took the train up to Montreal, you know? I'm like, that's good. After my official, first official trip outside, of the uh, of the United of the of the, of the of the United States of the contiguous United States, and I was that's, I, and I went and, 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 and so had Tesla happening to the the, the Montreal Jazz Festival was happening about that time. So there you go, I went and did that, <laughs> and so that was my first trip out. Then the next year, 1989, uh, I got this opportunity to go, to, and that's when I first got introduced to healing too and stuff like that. Uh, I think uh, that's what I first learned about. Uh, that the year, well, one of those years, I went. That's when I experienced an isolation tank, virology, what they look in your eyes to, to diagnose stuff. So that was kind of interesting, Mario. I'm just trying to say when I leave out, I get, I get my healing when I leave out. Okay. So the next year, I got an opportunity with a group to go to Panama right before they deposed Noriega. Oh, anyway, I just said. So I went to Panama. Now. And I took a bus to Cologne, and I didn't take it all the way to Cologne, like that. But here's the trick, here's the whole, my whole thing. If you look at it, depending on who you believe, rumor has it that my father, who was a one-night stand with my mother, was a traveling musician from Cologne, Panama, or at least from, you know, like, Garifuna, Garifuna, you know, uh, don't worry about that. Anyway, like, 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 like that. So I guess my official, my official trip out of North America was to Central America, and it was to where my my father's people's that so I got that that waft thing in me I guess you know what I mean okay but then my next official trip was later that, that day I went to uh, Guatemala right again the group of people up in Guatemala up in northern Guatemala uh, uh, with Port, uh, Puerto Barrios uh, uh, Livingston even though they just changed out their the, the indigenous people that took over you know the, uh, the they, you know, you know, there's this whole thing where they say, uh, well, Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. says that the, the, 
black people say, well, where do white people go and they follow them? But nah, that might be true. But there's another truth. Black people establish something and white people always come and either destroy it or overtake it because we got it that way, right? But back to the point. So, when I first went to Guatemala, again, I, I used to leave from my, from my sister. I always leave my sister first, right? And it was the first time I was going out of the country by myself. And it was, I was going to feel like I was... I don't know how many months of trip. I think it was supposed to be two months. It was to be a four months. I had this backpack, had a rolling cart. You had a, like a jungle shower thing. It was, it was ridiculous. You know how sisters are. They pack this and So I packed the thing real tight. And when I went to the, and when the, air, uh, the airplane landed up until like two o'clock in the morning. Right? And we had to go through the security. Now here's, I got, you got to understand what happened. At that time I had my locks. They weren't very, but they were, they were locks. They weren't very long. But I had just started in the, uh, yeah, I just started them. So then my locks came down, like, about my ears, something like that. But at that time, see, I had locks before. I had locks in the early 80s, you know, when they kill the people having locks. That's a whole other story. But uh, but but I had cut them because my best friend was having a wedding. He wanted me to have the locks. I don't know, you know. They was very, you know, manipulated or whatever it is. But I cooperated. It was no big thing to me, you know. So anyway, uh, so now I have my locks. They're, they're growing proper. Uh, uh, I think Rondi Miller even had, yeah, Rondi Miller had, she's a loctician, well, she was from a long family of, 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 of hair people. But see, they, they were looking really well. But they had this big backpack, and I was just, the guy, the guy, the, the guy, the security, whatever he was, you know, for the bag, he was checking some bags. The, the, the lady right before, she was like a middle-aged lady, she was going to be about 50 or something like that. He was going through her bag, you know, she was, she was bottom on. He, he was throwing stuff up, going through her bag, and I said, oh, no. Man, I packed, oh, this is going to be terrible. I'll be hour trying to repack this stuff. So I went there, and he gave the biggest smile. He said, tell me to go on through. Hey, I knew I was ready. I was built to travel, you know. So anytime I go through stuff and it's really a good experience, I figure, hey, because I'm built for this. And usually it happens outside of the United States, you see. So, well, that, 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 that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So this, this promises to be, it started very nice. It, it, it's a, so far it's been wonderful. Uh, I, I, I get, I get to, to travel. And I, and, and I think I want to, I'm in South Africa right now, I got some stuff to build, you know. But I'm going to try to save as much money as I can because I want to travel a little bit around, you know, around, see what I can hook up around uh, Southern Africa some more. I've been to Namibia, I've been to uh, 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 Zambia. I don't really need to go to Zimbabwe or whatever, but whatever. But uh, I've been to Mozambique. Right? I think I really want to go to Malawi. You know, but I don't know if I do this trip. But here's the thing: I need to go back to India. Something, some, I gotta go back to India. Here's also what I was thinking: because I pay attention to things. I found I found this T-shirt when I was at my sister's house. I used to wear. I think it says Ojiro for real, something like that. Now, supposedly, the meaning is like the person who would see just beyond the curve, just a little bit beyond the curve, right? And I realized that a lot of stuff that I've, that I've done in my life, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been the first to do like, like, like inline skates and uh, like rollerblades. I had them first. I just saw on the, on the plane, everybody's wearing hookers now. The, 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 the H, H-O-K-A, those, those sneakers. I had them I had like four years ago. Three years ago? Yeah, four years ago, five years ago, whenever it is. When they first came out. New Balance. They came, I first had them like that. Right now, I'm doing this whole, uh, uh, you know, minimal shoe kind of, kind of thing. Right? There's a really great one, shoe shop in Cape Town, I go for that. So I, I sort of, and there's a whole lot of other, I can keep on naming stuff. Then I've been there first, or I've been there when it starts, you know, when they had Africa Burn first, I was the first year I was there. You know? So there's a lot of places that I go to, and I, and I witness it, and then it sort of changes. But, you know, it changes, it gets touristed out or something like that. Even when I went to, when I used to go to Mexico, to go to Zipilite, the, the nude beach there, right? It was all, you know, and when I went, when years later, they started building up with concrete, whatever have you. Nah, not for me. So I'm always not looking for places, but I end up places where it's very unique, right? Which is, which is good. Well, for me, it's good. I like to live, you know, I like to live raw, as they say, you know? So right now, I live in a village, and believe me, they're going to start invading villages in South Africa right now, too. But, um, so that's it. I mean, I just wanted to, to tell you about all that. And uh, we got these cute little carts here at the... This is, oh, I got, I got a, 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 I have a blood pressure cuff that's, um, 
for the risk. Now you say, well, that's good. those things aren't that great. Well, no, they aren't. But the thing is, and I have the bigger one someplace else, but what I'm going to start doing is monitoring a little bit better. But what happens with these, especially blood pressure cuffs or anything like that, what happens is you keep it above your heart and the same level as your heart. And what do you do? You want a consistent number. Whatever the number they give you, you want a consistent number. Come on, thanks. Okay. And as long as you have a consistent number, then that's, you don't worry about that. Then you get your regular blood, blood pressure and see what your blood pressure is, like that. Let's go. Come on. I'm not getting a reading. Oh, boy. Well, I might have to not do this right now. I'll do something else right now. Oh, here we go. I'll play with that some other time. I'll leave it alone for now. Uh, let me, I want to show you one thing that they have in this in this, in this setup here that to me is quite interesting. I'll let you see the setup. There's all these shops, expensive shops on these upper levels there. All these expensive shops up there. You see them up there. Then they have this like, it looks like a forest, a jungle, a little jungle thing happening here. But if you follow this around, if you follow this around, can follow this around. I want to follow this around real, real good here. So I saw something here that was quite interesting. Here you have people that's chilling on all these benches, right? But here's what I want to show you. See the things look like teepees over there? Little huts like that? That's what's interesting. These are like sleeping, napping. Let's call them napping. Napping quarters. Oh, and then of course you have places where you can plug up your phone and, and, and charge up like that. Hey, they, they got it going on, gateway to wherever. See? They have napping things in here. See people just chilling here? And you could take a nap for a couple of hours and you'll be good. So, there you go. So now I've done my little recording. <sighs> I love these Apple boxes. Now I've done my little recording. And, uh, just so keeping you updated, me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect, but worldwide travel.